A collection of images of a person being shot with a gun, a skull with a knife sticking out, a person with a stab wound to the neck. Zoom into wound to see blood vessels, cells, genetic code, and finally, a fingerprint. Text reading visible proofs, forensic views of the body. Forensic science is all around us. We see it in the news, on our favorite television shows, and read about it in popular novels. It is part of our daily lives. Scenes of a skeleton in the woods and shots of an autopsy room. When a life is unexpectedly extinguished, we need answers and seek the cause. Today, this need is addressed in police investigations, laboratories, courtrooms, and all of the venues in which scientific medicine interacts with the law. The Field of Forensics. Banners for the visible proofs exhibit set up in the lobby of the National Library of Medicine. Glass case displaying very old forensic books in a heart with a puncture wound displayed in formaldehyde. The National Library of Medicine presents Visible Proofs, Forensic Views of the Body, an exhibition about the history of forensic medicine. Over the centuries, physicians, surgeons, and other professionals have struggled to develop scientific methods that translate views of bodies and body parts into visible proofs that can persuade judges, juries, and the public. David R. Fowler, MD, Chief Medical Examiner, State of Maryland. Almost everything is derived originally from pathology, which is if you look at the original word pathology, the Greek word, it's study of disease. Marcella Fidero, MD, Chief Medical Examiner, Commonwealth of Virginia. All of medicine deals with the little mystery of what happens to be wrong with the patient. Now, we come into the picture after this event has already occurred, the individual is dead. On the other hand, the information that we, we gather from these dead people, it has to, is, is our mission in medicine, be used for prevention. Forensic medicine, also called medical jurisprudence or legal medicine, emerged in the 1600s, a time when physicians and surgeons were becoming increasingly involved in legal proceedings. In the late 1700s, medical jurisprudence became part of the formal medical curriculum. To win acceptance, aspiring medical experts had to make their procedures, accomplishments, and themselves visible. Today, forensic medicine increasingly relies on DNA analysis, digital imaging, and other sophisticated technologies to identify victims, convict the guilty, and exonerate the innocent in criminal, civil, and governmental proceedings. Page from one of the old books fades into scenes of medical technology, a gel reservoir filled with DNA samples, animation of human body in an MRI scan, and a sample inlet with electron beam. DNA sample placed into tube and image of a thermal cycler. Barry Sheck, JD, co-founder, The Innocence Project. The great thing about forensic science in the criminal justice system is that we've been able, uh, certainly with DNA testing, not just to protect the innocent, uh, but to do a better job of going out there and apprehending those who really committed the crime. DNA analysis has emerged as an indispensable method of identifying suspects and victims of crimes. Everywhere we go, we potentially leave a small amount of DNA behind, which can then be picked up and examined in a laboratory, and the actual nature of that DNA can then be compared to a sample of DNA from a person who is a suspect at a scene. Animation of a gloved hand taking a DNA sample, samples placed in a thermal cycler. Next, we see a crime scene depicting a person laying sprawled in a hallway. Callouts indicate evidence samples around the body, including blood on the walls. DNA double helix fades into shots of footage from 911 and scenes from natural disasters. 
Stephen Sherry, PhD, scientist, National Center for Biotechnology Information. The role of DNA is a, a fascinating, impartial role because it, it, it speaks with an impartiality of fact. It can exonerate the innocent and it can implicate the truly guilty, not per se in, in a value-laden way, but just as a statement of the material fact that this person was at some place in time at which point they left a trace of their DNA. What we're discovering in the uh, recent advances in molecular biology and genetics is that we have an unprecedented opportunity to identify people with a precision, to affiliate them correctly with the family. And, and that's an, a, a new type of technology, and so it's raising expectations of closure. Um, it is providing a meaning and a value to science in terms of how it can deliver an impact on the lives of everyone, even if they don't participate in research. Posters reading forensic entertainment and true crime with detective books, comics, and pamphlets from various decades placed below. Since the 17th century, narratives have mixed violence and murder, police and scientific investigation, and courtroom drama, and have attracted a mass audience. But the intensity of public interest in forensics is now vastly greater, due to its prominence in the mass media as portrayed in the news and crime dramas. Well, the American public knows the most about forensic science from watching high-profile trials on television and these days from watching CSI and other, you know, police procedurals. And I have to tell you that forensic science is not CSI. Uh, it's not that new technologies don't exist, they do. It's just that they don't exist and they're not implemented in the ways that we see on television. Animation showing an ion detector being used, exhibit posters titled Upon a View of the Body, and Laboratory Views, The Cause. As fast as modern science is and the technology, it's virtually impossible to get the right answer with the confidence the show purports in 60 minutes. So I think exhibits like this are, are pulling together the whole growth in the, uh, the maturation of the field where the science is taking us in the future. CSI certainly you know, holds up the excitement of, of, of a potential you know, uh, quick answer. We're, we're not quite there yet. Well, it's great uh, to have an exhibition that truly demonstrates to the public the way that science can change the way we do business in the criminal justice system. Because it's interesting how it evolves. You have something like DNA technology, and it's a great advance. But one of its primary contributions is it shows the inadequacy of some past technology. Visible Proofs, Forensic Views of the Body, explores the human endeavors in developing scientific methods that translate views of bodies and body parts into visible proofs. It tells stories of the people, sciences, and technologies that make visible the cause and manner behind a death. Images of molds of a skulls and a covered body in an autopsy room. The patient is telling you what happened to him. He's telling you a story. He is asking you to figure out what happened to him. And that you do. You have great respect for your patient, whether he's dead or whether he's alive, and seek to answer those questions that need to be answered.